The USS New Jersey is an Iowa-class battleship that first saw service during World War II. It's most well known for being the most decorated battleship in United States Navy history, with 19 battle and campaign stars earned through its various periods of service. Join me in this video as I build and review the 1 to 2000 scale plastic model kit of this prestigious vessel from the works. Hello and welcome to Model Minutes. This video was chosen by you, the community, during a recent poll on Twitter, with the vast majority voting in favour of this build and review video. Thanks to everyone who took part. Before I start the kit, as always, remember that adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. The works recommends this kit for those aged 8 and over. The front of the box features artwork depicting the battleship whilst at sea, whilst images of the other kits in the range are represented on the side. This model is part of the same range as the HMS Hood kit I built previously, and that video can also be found on my channel, so why not check it out? The rear of the box displays safety warnings and information, as well as three very small images which are the build instructions. These are not the easiest to follow, being quite vague and difficult to read. Inside the box, a plastic bag holds three small sprues. One moulded in red and the other two in dark grey plastic. The plastic is harder than that used by other model kit manufacturers, so be aware of that if you're using knives and files. The moulded detail is quite reasonable, with many small and interesting details being present but due to its incredibly small scale, I'm not entirely sure how accurate these details are. This being said, the moulded parts are well formed and feature little to no flash being present. Nowhere on the instructions did it recommend that the parts be washed in warm soapy water, which is what I've recently been doing prior to starting a kit. So I decided to omit this step to see how well the kit would go together without it. Throughout this build, I'll be using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement as it has a good flow quality and the included brush applicator helps ensure accurate placement of the cement. Parts will be removed from the sprue using a sharp knife and any rough areas cleaned up with a nail file. The first parts to be assembled were the two red plastic parts which are the two halves of the hull of the ship. These are slightly warped and required holding in position whilst the cement cured to help them retain the correct shape. Next, the deck of the battleship was removed from the sprue, cleaned up and added to the top of the hull. It does fit quite well, but again, care has to be taken with alignment and it may need to be held in place until it has set to help prevent any gaps being present. The bow of the ship was the next part to be added to the model. I'm not sure why this is a separate part, as I feel it could have been included as part of the previous deck part, but it does fit into position well. The large gun turrets are then added to the assembly. They are quite well moulded and fit into their positions well. This is a little fiddly, but not as difficult as the next step, which is to install the small turrets on the side of the ship. There are 10 of these and they are very small. Tweezers would be a handy tool to use here to help with cementing them into the correct position. It's worth noting that the gun turrets are able to be cemented pointed in any direction, which would be handy for those of you who decide to model this as part of a diorama, perhaps firing upon an enemy vessel. Next, the stern of the ship received the two aircraft catapult rails and the recovery crane. These are also very fiddly to get in the right position, as they are particularly small components. This was then followed by the addition of the two tiny aircraft parts. They were carefully removed from the sprue and then added to their catapult rails. This is very difficult to achieve and I found that I had to keep making tiny adjustments as the cement cured. The various towers and funnels were then added to the model along with a number of other smaller details which finishes off the build. Whilst you watch the completion of the model, I'll tell you a bit more about the real Battleship New Jersey. Launched a year after the attack on Pearl Harbor, 
The new jersey was then commissioned in 1943, and following the training of her initial crew in the Western Atlantic, she made her way to the Pacific Theatre of War in 1944. She played a main part acting as a screening ship, protecting the aircraft carriers in the fleet, or acting as floating artillery to soften up land targets during amphibious landing operations. During the Korean War, she once again took part in bombarding land targets, and at times being in the direct line of fire from shore batteries. The New Jersey also took part in the Vietnam War with great distinction, but was then decommissioned, only to be reactivated in 1982 and outfitted with the latest in ship armament, including Tomahawk cruise missiles and Phalanx Gatling guns. Following action in the Lebanese Civil War, she was then again decommissioned, but for the final time in 1991. In the year 2000, she was opened as a museum ship following a period of restoration and is a floating monument to her successes and all the servicemen who served aboard her during her various periods of service. It is worth noting that there are two small holes on the bottom of this model that allow the moulded display base to fit into by inserting the columns on the base. I decided not to cement this part on so that the battleship could be removed. The two aircraft were given a coat of Humbrol 27 sea grey matte acrylic to help them stand out a little better, but this turned out to be negligible in the final model. You might be able to see in the video that there is a tower structure that has not been added to the model. The kit was not particularly clear on where this part went, but following some research into the actual battleship, I believe that it is an alternative tower for the ship that was installed in its later years of service. If you know what this is, please feel free to post it in the comments below. And that's as far as I went with the build of my 1 to 2000 scale Battleship New Jersey from The Works. This kit cost £3 at the time it was purchased, but at the time of this video they no longer seem to be available in stores. Having done a little research on the history of the kit, it would seem that this was previously a Bandai kit and dates back to 1981. All in all, I feel that it was worth the money spent on it, as it is a fun little kit to kill a few hours in an afternoon. But with poor instructions and no information on how to paint the kit, I feel that it might not be a great introduction to the hobby for beginners. For someone a little more experienced, however, I'm sure that a very convincing little model of this ship can be built. As it had been asked on my previous HMS Hood video, I wanted to see if this model would actually float. So I added a few drops of blue food colouring to some water to make it look a little more like the sea, and tested it out. Despite the holes in the bottom of the hull, it actually floats surprisingly well. It's not perfect as it rolls to one side or the other, but perhaps with a little work it could make a reasonable bath toy. In conclusion, I feel like this is a fun kit to build, but don't expect a 100% accurate model as it's such a small scale and is quite an old tooling. The only thing that lets it down really is the vague and tiny instructions, but this can be overcome to build a fairly good looking model. I do feel however that this will look good sitting alongside my HMS hood as part of a display, and I'm quite pleased with the results I've managed to achieve. As always, let me know what you think of my build, techniques and finish model in the comments below. I'm also keen to hear your suggestions as to other kits that you'd like to see me build on my channel, so feel free to post that too. All that's left to say is thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and click that notification button in order to see more content and help support the channel. And feel free to share this video with your family and friends. Don't forget that you can connect with me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. See you all again next time.